world is a sphere, it most certainly is not flat. Try thinking, or Bev, try thinking, is a flat earther that claims not to be a flat earther, because there are hills and mountains, so the earth cannot be completely flat. At the same time try thinking keeps on telling ad nauseum, that level means horizontal, horizontal means a horizontal plane, perpendicular the plumb line. Therefore all horizontals are parallel to each other. And since parallel lines never cross, the earth cannot be a sphere. Well... I would suggest that no matter where you are, if you're going from one location to another location, you could have a horizontal and check at every point of the journey along the way to make sure that your horizontal is parallel to the plane of the horizon or not. The horizontal being a straight line. And also being parallel to the plane of the horizon, always, um, would necessarily make it true. The conclusion is that horizontals are parallel to each other. Now, I've always said that anyway. It's the principles of geometry. That's, uh, well, of surveying geometry, practical geometry for elevation changes. All horizontals are parallel. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious. How do we know the horizon in London is parallel to the horizon at New York? Well, I'd say, are both of those um, horizontals that are near the horizon in London and the one that's near the horizon in New York, are they both parallel to the plane of the horizon in both of those locations? Because if they are, logically speaking, they are parallel to each other, yeah, logically. That just about sums up the intellectual knowledge of this one trick pony. Let's try to wrestle through a compilation of his contributions to several debates. Level. Uh, a level. Levels. We'll get two levels. Use a level. Levels that uh, a level. Level no, is level. Level Euclidean geometry. Of Euclidean um, geometry. Level. Horizontal, dear. Horizontal, dear. Horizontals and horizontal. Horizontal geometry. Uh, perpendicular, aren't they? That's geometry. Perpendicular is perpendicular on a horizontal, and that horizontal perpendicular. Horizontal. The water yeah, level. Yeah. Right? Spirit level. Right? Level. They mean horizontal. You call in level. Horizontal. Horizontal. Yes, yes. We called it level. Horizontal. Horizontal. Level. Horizontal plane. Water level. The level. The level. Water level. Level with level. It level is a horizontal. No. The geometry. No, no. The geometry. No, no. Horizontal. The level is horizontal. The level is water level. To level. Two levels at the on a horizontal. Horizontal. Let me finish. The horizontal. Horrible, isn't it? But does he have a point? Let's see. If all horizontal planes are parallel, then, by definition, all plumb lines are parallel. Are they? No, they are not. And there is a simple method how we can demonstrate that plumb lines are not parallel. This method is called, the reciprocal zenith angle measurement. You can measure the angle between your line of sight to another observer at some distance, and the vertical, that is the plumb line. You can also measure the angle between the line of sight from the other observer to you, and the vertical or plumb line. When the verticals, or the plumb lines, at those two observation points, are parallel, then the sum of both angles should be 180 degrees. If the sum of these angles is less than 180 degrees, then it would mean that the verticals are converging above those observation points. If the sum of these angles would be greater than 180 degrees, then the verticals would be converging beneath both observation points. 
and lo and behold, measurements have shown the sum of the reciprocal zenith angles, is always greater than 180 degrees, as can be seen in this overview. And it even gets worse for try thinking. If you would draw at scale, all of the measured zenith angles, based on a flat plane, all of the verticals will converge more or less in one point. This suggests that, considering that plumb lines at least ought to be perpendicular to the local horizontal, that the measurements were taken on a sphere. If that were so, it should be possible to calculate the radius of that sphere. And that can be done, using this simple set of equations. The proportion P of the angle to the total circle would be alpha divided by 360. This proportion equals the proportion of the distance to the circumference of the circle. So we can derive the radius using this formula, r equals the distance over the proportion p times 2 times pi. There were 7 reciprocal zenith angle measurements taken, and if you calculate the radius resulting from each of these measurements, you get these results. The average radius of the Earth is calculated to be 7,243 kilometers. That's about 13% more than the generally accepted number of 6,371 kilometers. And that's where refraction comes into play. Under standard atmospheric conditions, light is bent downwards, which makes objects at a distance be seen at a higher location than they really are. So the zenith measurements will result in a lower value than in reality. There is a correction for this problem. First, there is the simple rule of thumb of 7 over 6 times r. This means that, due to the atmospheric refraction, the radius r of the Earth is seen as 7 over 6 times as large as it is in reality. When we apply this correction we get these numbers, resulting in an average calculated radius of the Earth of 6,158 km. That's just over 3% less than the generally accepted value of 6,371. Most florfers don't agree with this method because they, falsely, claim that it presupposes R. So there is a better, more accurate way, and that is to calculate the refraction angle, using factors like the atmospheric pressure and the temperature lapse rate. Using the results of these calculations, based on the advanced earth curvature calculator of Walter Bislin, we find a radius, R. Of 6,179 kilometers, that's around 3% less than the generally accepted value of 6,371. So seven basic measurements have shown that plumb lines are not parallel at different places of the world. And they also provide the numbers, that make calculation of the radius of the Earth possible to an accuracy of around 3%. This leaves try thinking with rather empty hands. Don't you think? Thanks for watching.